So in this clip, we look at the restriction operator uh, t restricted to u for some subspace u, and the quotient operator t mod u. These uh, can help you to study or understand uh, an operator t when u is chosen wisely. Um, but not necessarily uh, when it isn't. And so in this clip, I'll show you uh, an example of an operator um, where when we do the, if we choose u, um, well, we'll see that the, the restriction and, and quotient operators turn out to be trivial, even though uh, u is not. So suppose we've got an operator on uh, F2. And it's given by uh, sending the point x comma y to the point y comma 0. Um, <clears throat> now this one has an invariant subspace, which is just the, the first axis. Um, and So to see that that is, well, first off, let me just draw a little sketch to show um, what's going on with this operator. And, and then we'll talk about why that's an invariant subspace and, and look sort of at, at what's going on. So here we've got the case when we're looking at R2. And so if I take uh, this line right here, every point on this line is going to get mapped to right here. Because it doesn't matter what their x coordinate goes to, they're all going to go to y comma zero, right? So it's going to map that entire line to that point. Um, if I have some other line up here, it's going to map to this point down here. And if I have some line down here, south of the origin, it's going to get mapped to this point over here. Okay, so what we've got going on here is that x comma y gets mapped to y minus x. So this is a pi over 2 clockwise rotation and then gets projected onto its first coordinate. So one way of understanding what T does is it's a composition of, of this rotation and projection. You could also understand it as um, the composition of the projection onto the second axis um, combined then with, uh, I'll put minus zero just facetiously to indicate this is the same. Uh, clockwise rotation. All right, so I, either one of those, uh, those are equivalent. So, okay, so let's see. So first off, um, U is the null space of T. So <clears throat> notice that if, if we start with the second coordinate equal to zero, then uh, T just kills off the first coordinate and so definitely everything goes to to zero. So if we look at t of u, this is the trivial space, which is contained in u because u is a subspace. I'm just repeating here the proof that um, the null space is an invariant subspace. All 
okay um, <clears throat> so that shows that u is invariant and 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 I guess uh, it also shows that t restricted to u uh, is the zero operator so now we'll see that there is no invariant subspace w uh, which acts as another factor for f2 by which I mean oh I sort of messed up my two there um, by which I mean that f2 can be written as the direct sum of u and w so to see why this is true suppose uh, we could write f2 as uh, a direct sum like this then as we saw in the previous example the dimension of w would be the dimension of f2 minus the dimension uh, of u which would be 1 So every element of W would be an eigenvector. Okay. <clears throat> um, um, but you can see that everything off the axis gets moved into the axis. So it's not possible for there to be an eigenvector unless it's in the axis U. And so what does that tell you? That tells you that either W isn't invariant um, or else W is equal to U or else W is equal to F2. <coughs> Those are our only possibilities. Uh, but if it's invariant, we're not interested in it. Uh, if it's equal to u, then uh, the sum of these um, is not going to be all of f2, nor is it going to be a direct sum. And in this last case, uh, if we took it to be f2, the sum would be all of f2, but the sum would not be direct. because there would be a in non-trivial intersection between u and, and f2. Um, OK, so it all falls apart. OK, so um, now if we look at the other one, t mod u, this one is equal to 0 on f2 mod u. Uh, <coughs> because t mod u if we so if we, we're looking at the quotient map here so we'll apply this to uh, an x y plus u slice um, and then by the definition of the quotient map this is going to be t of x y plus u and then uh, this is, by the definition of t, going to be y0 plus u. But then you see that um, uh, since y0 is an element of u, this is the same thing in the quotient space as the 0 element. Um, the end. <laughs>